What's up guys, welcome back to the workbench, Dan here, and it is time for another build series here, and just like as always, um, I'm going to be just doing a kind of a run through of what I'm doing, showing you guys some basic details about how I'm going to build, and how I'm going to detail and do some work like that, uh, but it's not going to be a step by step how to, moreover just for you guys to sit back, relax, and just learn some things here and there, kind of get in my mind on how I do certain things and tackle big complex projects like this. And in means of complex projects, we're going to be taking care of a big one today, and it's going to be the Epic Spine Cars. Let's take a look at what the uh, are. A lot of you guys probably have seen these before. Uh, we mostly get them here in the east, uh, but I think some do end up going out west uh, here and there as well. But anyways, what these cars are, are specially built 40-foot containers that haul sewer sludge and solid waste such as that and they load them in these box like containers uh, that have dump ends uh, and they dump them at landfills and special um, locations uh, for example here in Ohio uh, we have a couple landfill facilities I think down south uh, that take these cars and they unload them safely um, and with these cars it's not just the containers that are really cool and unique but the spine cars themselves and the video is going to be focusing on the spine cars today what I'm going to be looking at is the specially built uh, two-piece spine car set just like an intermodal or a TFC flat anything like that these cars are articulated so they're jointed together riding on one truck and these uh, basically can haul three containers a piece I've never seen these things haul um, more than three per car I don't think I'd love to see some photos of one of these if they had four containers but I think for weight distribution or something along those lines they never put that extra container over the truck um, but they might I'm sure that they've made some different arrangements on these but uh, most of the time they you know, usually have the containers distributed like this so it's actually pretty unique in that respect anyways the flat car itself like I said is what we're gonna be focusing on it's specially built these aren't used for anything else other than this service they're a very simple construction they have bracing to support the containers on both ends just like a regular spine car uh, there's no outer construction no outer bracing nothing like that it's literally just a inner beam with supports and bolsters and a coupler pocket for the trucks I mean that's pretty much bare bones what it is now how do you go about building something like this well the only real option is what I'm going to show you now this box here contains the answer to our problem there we go alright so what we're looking at here is a five unit all-purpose spine car set. You guys are probably uh, pretty familiar with these. These are an old Walther's kit. These have been around for years and they've made some better versions of these in the RTR line but they're a, a cast metal uh, construction. I've chosen this kit because it's the closest spine car version that'll get us the closest to actually being able to build our epic flat cars. Uh, and when you w want to do any kind of kit bashing like this, you always want to try to source out a kit or an available model on the market that'll get you the closest to actually being able to build what you're trying to build without uh, the least modification really. So I've chosen this kit because it's plastic construction. It'll be easy to cut and modify. All we really got to look at here is shortening the beam a little bit, figuring out how much we need to shorten, splice some parts together, and what I like to call this kind of build is a heavy kit bash because we're going to be scratch building and fabricating some of our own parts and combining them with the kit parts as we modify them. If we take off the lid, you can see what we got. A large kit full of different parts. I believe those are the weights. Yeah, those are the weights. And they are, oh shit, they are metal. Okay, well that's going to be kind of a, kind of a pain, but uh, well, I guess we'll deal with that in a little while. Anyways, as you can see, we got tons of kit parts, so we're going to be using all this to uh, build two cars total. Well, alright, so on inspection, we do have one problem, and it's that these cars are actually cast metal. So, kind of disappointing. I thought these were uh, plastic pieces, which would have been easier to cut. However, they're metal, meaning that these are going to be a little bit harder to kind of graft together. Uh, that being said, we'll get it done. We'll uh, piece these together one little bit at a time. I don't give up that easily, but it is a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, as for these pieces, what I'm looking at here, these center pieces, I really don't think I can use. Um, the reason is because the spacing in that uh, cutout where the center spine extends out, this will be the center section. This is the outer section, obviously. This is the longest 
out of both of these. Uh, so this version, the middle joining sections, uh, that section there is too short to be able to modify it and extend it out. So these are effectively useless. I can't really do anything with these for the project, but when we look at the car again, we have the right uh, length and spacing with this style of car. So for the most part everything's right until we get to the end piece here. Now this has a walkway with the car, the epic spine car, the car would end here. There are no walkway platforms on this prototype car. As you can see, there's no way to get across this car. There's no walkways on both ends. Meaning, in order to get that right, we would have to heavily modify this piece and then build a coupler box and everything around it, and I don't want to do that. So, what are the options here, obviously, trying to do this? Because we have the wrong end piece, we'd have to modify it. Do we have to scratch build it? What are we going to use? Well, in this particular case, I actually had looked through my parts sources. I found these bolster sections. What these are from are Atlas Thrall Gundles. They make a special narrow profile coupler box that you can use for your models, and you can install couplers, and then you basically through a series of modifications you can add these to the thrall gun doors if you don't like the stock coupler uh, pockets that they give you on the model to access their horrible couplers. This is the solution to getting like the KD coupler or something like that is by modifying this. Anyways the point is they provide a set of these in a kit so you get two per kit or assembled model I should say. Now the thing with this we do have the right bolster and with a little bit of cutting and modification, we could take this piece, splice it, and we'd have a shorter end piece like this, right? And then we could build some trim pieces outside, run a cage around that, and then basically set the container on top of that. Uh, so, easier said than done, of course. What this comes down to is we'd have to cut the end piece off the spine car two times. The other issue, while we're cutting metal, we'd have to grind all of these little bits off. Which would be an absolute pain in the butt. Because this metal is very tough, and even with a Dremel, it takes quite a bit of grinding to actually remove these. The other issue, the Epic Spine cars do not have this rib running the whole length. It's just a flat piece of metal, meaning that we would have to probably repanel the sides of these with some styrene, some real thin profile styrene. Which, the good news with that is that we'd be able to kind of cover all of our splice and dice work, blending these together if I can modify them. And we'd be able to hide that together pretty well, and obviously with a black coat of paint everything would look just like it was built that way. Again, <laughs> easier said than done. This is kind of one of these things where if you really want one of these cars, you have to be willing to go through with the basically insane amount of work that it would take to build one of these and this is why you know it's got to be one of those things where you question yourself is it worth it for you this isn't necessarily a big investment what it's an investment in is time not so much money you can get these kits on eBay I got this one for like 30 bucks but it's the amount of time that's gonna probably take I don't have all the time in the world for modeling these days as you guys know I've said it enough times you don't need to get reminded but you know life is busy time is short and it's going to be one of these things if I do decide I want to build this it's going to probably take a few weeks but again with you guys you get to watch this all on camera not see the painstaking process of me removing all these parts you'll see this in a few minutes but in reality this is going to probably take a couple weeks so <sighs> oh boy you know that's what it is I really want models of these things what do you do and we haven't even gotten to the part about the containers yet because We'd obviously have to scratch build those, but there's another option. We'll get to that when we get to it. But first thing we need to do, if we want to commit to this, we figure out how to modify these spines. And the first thing we got to do is actually cut them down and remove some bits. What I'm going to do is cut those off. We'll come back. I'll show you guys what these look like after I've stripped them down. And we'll basically start from there. Here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, more bad news. Another big setback. Um, I had to look at this car body again right before I was about to cut all those little uh, struts and everything off the metal flat car I was looking at this and I was like the truck distance it didn't look right and then when I double checked with my flat car I noticed that from end to end 
where the container sits over the truck, where it sits over the end truck, it's um, pretty damn short. As a comparison, let me bring in some 40 foot containers. The containers are 40 feet long. These are some Atlas. These are not Epic containers, but they'll stand because they're the right length. So, if we take these containers, remember that spacing on the truck right there. And. Yep. Like a brick wall. Smacked me right in the face. Complete and utter cold chills down the spine. Y'all know what that feeling is. It's where you reach a point where it becomes mm, pretty much a complete practical impossibility. The car is simply too long. So the car is simply too long for the project. It's just not going to work. And it makes cutting all this off absolutely pointless because the car body is too big. It's all metal, meaning it would take me hours to slice through this. Again, I only have Dremel. I have a limited amount of tools. I don't have a lathe or anything like that where I can properly slice through metal with ease. Uh, I'm very limited with what I can do with my tools and where I can operate those kinds of tools. So that's pretty much completely out of the option. So essentially what I have here is the impossible. And this is again <laughs> where it comes to is the project worth it? Uh, this is something I really want. These are unique cars. They would be important to my aspect of model railroading because the model railroad I've built is mainly centered around the trash industry and where I'm modeling these cars go through regularly. They're tacked onto the trash trains for dumping and they are a key component to the scene and the trains that I'm trying to replicate. I've wanted models of these things for years and my skills are finally up to par to be able to tackle something like this. At first I thought I was going to scratch build the containers, but we're going to talk about those later. The containers are a whole other sob story. The flat car I thought I could scratch build easily out of this, and now it completely turns out that I can't. So basically these are just paperweights. I can't do anything with them. Um, I'm going to basically put these back in the box, and I really can't do anything with them. So little bit disappointing here but there is a will there's a way and I'm gonna show you guys what I have decided to do here <sighs> three hours later I decided to take on the project more seriously and I scratch built these main beams for the cars I have two sets so one car, one unit, is two pieces. I've made four. We have two cars that we're looking at here. I used all the packs of my Atlas bolster and coupler pocket sets, assembled those. I pre-cut all my styrene, measured it ahead of time. What it is is 040 inch styrene for the bottom plate. The middle section is, I believe, 060 inch styrene strip it's like a beam for reinforcement. I cut to size. I glued the butt joint right up to the bolster pad and then to reinforce the top portion and also to go ahead and provide myself with a basic floor setup to begin with I installed the 040 inch sheet here which I cut to size and that created this beam. Ignore this blue piece for a second. So that created the right size beam because if you look at the photos, notice how the containers do overhang over the truck, but the coupler pocket still sticks out a little bit. But then you still have a little bit of overhang between that truck and that little end joint where it would pivot. And that's obvious because it has to be able to go around curves without the containers striking new each other. So there's a specific distance. And I measured that out on my model. And this is what I came up with. Rough estimate here. You can see where that pin is, where that pivoting pin is. There's the space for the coupler pocket and the correct length for the bolster. So it actually works out quite nicely. Better than if I had tried to actually kit bash with these metal pieces. So, this was a blessing in disguise as it turns out. And the kit is not a total wash. I know you, some of you guys are probably asking me, uh, what are you going to do with this? Is it completely useless then? Why did you bother buying it? Well, no. 
And the reason it ends up working out here is because the kit does come with some really nice trim pieces. It's got the brake rigging I need, uh, which is actually pretty pretty damn accurate for this model. It comes with some other details that I can use, uh, other various things I can use for uh, basic kit bashing, things like that. And the most important thing for this project is it comes with the pivoting mechanism for the articulation between the cars. It would be these little joints here. Obviously what makes the cars able to join and lock together. That would be where the truck rests. So the third middle truck. One truck here. One truck here. Middle truck. That little pivoting joint is actually very nicely engineered by Walters. I, they did a really good job making that. Atherin, I know, made a similar pin and Bowser, but uh, I don't really want to get those parts. So, I had the plastic parts, which are already easy to cut and modify anyway. So that ended up being a blessing in disguise. I just basically took a set of these little pins. You get two sets per sprue, and I have a couple of these. So I can actually make some more cars down the road if I want. Um, and you can see, I just basically took these pieces and I modify them by cutting them and trimming them down, leaving me only with these metal, or not the metal, but middle pieces, excuse me. And I just test fit them by putting a pair of trucks underneath each individual set, just like this. I test fit it to make sure that once I glued everything together, I was at the right height, and it wasn't leaning this way or the other way. I wanted to make sure it was completely level and flush, and I lined everything up nicely. Once I did the first one, which is the hardest, then I knew how I could go about doing the others. So the first one took me about an hour or two of engineering nightmares to figure out the exact length, sketch it out a couple times, and then test fit and test cut a couple pieces of styrene. And it worked out well. Once I got that done, I just basically uh, duplicated the rep and re uh, replicated the sizes of the styrene for all the others. And styrene cutting is easy because you can just take the pieces and stack them up and you can just keep tracing them out and cut them out as many as you need. It comes in real handy uh, once you get going. And then that, after that I was pretty much able to piece these together with uh, relative ease. These came together in about five minutes from the time I cut the styrene, gluing everything together. It was actually pretty straightforward, so I will say that. Now, that being said, this is the very bare bones skeletal structure, but we now have a starting point to properly build one of these cars. And it's actually going to work out better than if I had used the middle kit. Very long-winded explanation, I apologize for that. I wasn't trying to go into that much detail, and I didn't think we were going to go into that much detail, but that's what happens sometimes with these builds. You have to work with what you got. And in this case, I'm dedicated to building this project. I've already started filming it. I want to be able to show you guys what I'm doing here and show you some of the, the cool things that I can do and kind of my, my specific talent with taking on these odd, complex projects. I made it work out, and now we have a base model. So this is actually going to pretty much be the official starting point for this build. So now what we need to do next, now that we got the basic bare-bones skeletal structure, I'm going to go ahead and start building the inner and outer framework for the end coupler pockets. There is the section here, just like any other flat car, where it would wrap around. Basically, this kind of construction is exactly the same as it would be on a tank car. Uh, it's very similar. Oopie, sorry about that. My uh, computer timed out. Come on, baby. Seriously? Okay, anyways, what I was trying to say was the skeletal structure runs all the way. It's like a brace. It's just like a tank car, and if you've seen a tank car, you know what it looks like. So I'm going to basically modify this piece, add some styrene to it that wraps all the way around, and that'll provide me with the basic framework for the ends. I won't have to do as much on these. I'll build that out when we get to it. But once I build that, then I'll know uh, what else I need to do. Here you can see a real good view of that skeletal framework. That's what I'm going to have to build next. Then I'll work on the little simplified structure, the supports basically, on this end. I'll build those. All right, we'll take care of that. And then the next thing will be to build the slope sheet for the beam. You can see it's this interesting shape. That'll be easy to figure out because I'll just basically stick a pair of trucks under there and I can just eyeball guess. Once I cut one piece out that looks right, then I can just paste and copy that piece basically on a large sheet of 020 or 040 inch styrene and just keep cutting out that same shape over and over and over again because these are all precisely cut. These are the exact same length each. I took a lot of care doing that. So that'll be honestly pretty easy. I build the framework, 
Then what I do, I start building the supports. These middle pieces. It's going to basically be one, two, three, four, five pieces each uh, to build one of these supports for each side. So five, 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 twenty different pieces that I'll be cutting up to make those basic framework supports. Then we can come back at brake gear, rigging, piping, everything like that, and we can start working on the upper deck and start building it. So let's see what else we can get done. I know this is already starting to get long, so let's go ahead and get into this. We're going to start building our, st our skeletal structure on the ends, start filling in some details, and I'll keep you guys posted. Let's get started. All right, so I spent a good portion of the morning today building the outer framework, and as you can see, the bracing for the bolster is set up. It has a platform that runs atop the coupler lift, uh, the, not the coupler lift bar, but the coupler pocket itself. And this is going to be where the container would rest. And then there will be some little pads, mounting pads, that will be on the corners that will fabricate. Uh, so they'll be there. Uh, we'll add some other end details and things like that later on. But right now what we're working on is the main skeletal portion of the car, so fine details will come later. I also trimmed down those pieces on the ends so that they're flush with the top deck here. And uh, I'm thinking I'm going to probably put another piece possibly across. I'm not really sure yet. But um, we'll get to that when we get to it. So anyways, those are done. And unfortunately with this design of the coupler pocket, it's not a top. Or it's, it's not a bottom piece. It's a top piece. So I have to install the couplers on these for me to be able to install the uh, strip there. Which is annoying. I'll just have to mask those off when it comes time for painting and everything like that. Uh, but so far so good, we actually have a realistic looking end cage. So that's done. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is start working on the end piece here, and then we'll start working on the outer skirting by cutting out a piece, and I'll show you guys how I do that. This is what I have fabricated up. These are uh, the slope skirts. These are what are going to go on the sides between the bolster and the end piece there with the pivoting mechanism we're going to glue that on so we have a good solid structural piece to glue all this to which will be really nice so it should be nice and solid the only thing that we don't have here is weight these are very lightweight uh, whatever weight we do have we're going to have to rely on putting the weight in the containers when we get to it so um, <clears throat> I've fabricated enough sets of these to do all four cars uh, they're all precisely cut I just basically cut one get the rough dimensions. Once I have one that fits properly, it looks right, it's not interfering with the trucks or anything like that, then I know I have the right piece. Then I can proceed to basically copy the piece by retracing it on another piece of styrene and just continually cutting the same pattern out over and over and over again. Uh, I recommend when you're doing the scratch building and you're working on multiple cars at the same time, try to fabricate the same pieces at the same time you're working on. Don't stop, do one piece, and then start working on something else and then have to go back is going to get a lot more tedious at that point. Uh, for example, if you had to like put the ribs on a side of a car, it's the same thing. You'd want to cut a whole bunch of rib sections enough to do however many cars you're doing at one time. That way you're not having to go back and then you're trying to get in the motion of like cutting a whole bunch of ribs a certain size. You have the ability with your measurements to just cut one and then you can just keep making them over and over again with relative ease. Uh, it's easier to do that and mass produce them. Get what you need don't stop and go back and then have to make more. So in this case, that's going to be how I'm going to be building these cars. From now on, it should be pretty easy. We got these uh, pieces cut out. I'm simply going to glue them to the sides of all four of my units here, and that'll take care of that. So let me go ahead and glue those on, and I'll show you what those look like. All right, guys. Well, it's uh, officially 12:22, early Wednesday morning here. I just got out of work, and I'm home and watching a little Ghost Adventures, kicking back, chilling. Got my ramen noodles and water, and I'm just chilling, like I said. And I decided to work on these a little bit more. Since that last clip, I went ahead and installed the side skirts to all these cars. Very easy. Just fabricated these in a few minutes. Uh, the only thing you got to worry about is making sure everything lines up properly, and the side pieces sit flush with the deck so that there's no interference. They're not going over that edge. After I did that, then I went back in and started doing some finer detailing, making the little cross sections and then the supporting beams for the end rail there. Same on this end, I scratch bit, uh, built all that up and then added the bracing to it. I made the little mounting pads on the end here and then it's got the jacking pad as well. 
good start. And this one as well is finished. So this is one unit here. This one. That's one unit. I gotta kind of mark these off. I need to make sure I don't mix the cars up because I am building these specifically for each other. Uh, so this set is one. This set is one. And on this set, while I was working and eating, I had some styrene laying out. So I was like, I'm gonna try to scratch bash these things, uh, these middle center posts, and see if I can do it. So I scratched them up, and it was relatively easy. I just fabricated some styrene like before, cut a bunch of pieces up. I glued them in place, aligned everything properly, and if we take the container, you can see when we put the container on the car, it's a perfect fit. Same thing on this end. Perfect fit. So, we've done good there. Um, looking at the bottom fabrication, you'll notice that it's all pretty much open. Uh, it should be closed, but I was kind of thinking that I want to put maybe a weight inside this. And I'm thinking maybe some kind of lead weight like a lead rod or something like that maybe just something to give these cars some weight because as you can see they're very very lightweight there's no weight to these if I try to run them on the model road or they go around a curve they would streamline immediately so if you guys have any ideas something I can use I know I don't know maybe derby cars uh, balsa wood car kits something like that there's probably something I can use maybe something for ballasting model ships I'm not sure, but uh, if you guys have any ideas what I could probably use that will fit inside that. It's got to be a very thin, long rod-like piece or something I could stick in there where it'll fit inside that narrow profile. And then I can just put a false floor around it and seal it in, basically is my idea. So we're making some progress. We've made quite significant progress on the one. I figured out I can build these posts pretty easily, so now I'm going to construct two more for this unit back here. Once we do that, then we can start doing some more detailing, and then my favorite part, plumbing. And that'll be doing all the brake rigging, installing the brake gear, the rigging, a uh, couple of lift bars, the couple of lift bar mounting pad, uh, air hose mechanisms, which are going to be fun, uh, all kinds of intricate little details, little parts that we got to scratch build. Obviously with something like this, you don't have to go into that much detail. If you want something like this, a simple scratch built model, uh, then just paint it put some containers on it, call it a day. You don't have to do something as extreme as I am, but I'm figuring if I'm going all the way with this kind of detail, why not at this point put the rest of the details on it, make them exact real or tangent or atherin genesis quality detailed models. Uh, it'd be stupid of me not to at this point, being that I've done so much work already. So that's going to be the, kind of the plan here. Anyways, that's where we're at. So the next thing is build more of these. Start working on that, and we'll see where we're at next in the uh, next clip tomorrow. So what I did for this is I took and measured out where the centerpiece needed to go. And I prefabbed the basic piece by cutting pieces of styrene. And I glued them together like that, so you can see the basic shape. Now here's the cool part. What you do, you take the piece, just like if it was a kit, Look at that. Perfect snug fit. Doesn't get any much more beautiful than that, does it? Damn right. So I'm going to do that, glue it down, and then I'll start building the bracing that'll be, I think it's angled just like that, and then there would be another it's a duplicate of how they do the bracing on these sections. Uh, but I gotta double check. I'm not actually sure if those do have that bracing or not, so I'll double check with it. Um, and I'll go from there. And I gotta add some other little bits and bobs to this, and then also put in the covering, the base of the brace, uh, to blend that together. Once I do that, uh, we should be smooth sailing from there, and we can start doing the fun stuff. So it's uh, let's see, early afternoon here, and I've been working on these since this morning, and I got a little bit more done. All the uh, pads are done for the center of the car, and I've started to move on to some plumbing and detailing to kind of figure out. I started with this one just to see if I could lay everything out. I uh, used some prototype photos to kind of match the brake arrangement. These are really cool because they have the dual air tanks. Uh, they got that valve there, and I just ran some brass wire, made some uh, little mounting pads and things like that. Finished that, ran the brake line all the way down, and then here you can see I wrapped the brake line over there and I used an Atlas pivoting air hose mechanism 
for this car because the real prototypes have that just like what you would see on like a T-Box or something like that or auto rack uh, and then I added the coupler lift bar mounting jack there and then I have the grab irons on each end on this side I have more of the brake piping very basic brake piping added there there's a little like, compressor there uh, some other little details so I have a couple little things done and that on this car I've already started the detailing as well so you can see that that's just started to get set up uh, so these are the brake ends these also have the brake set there those are from an Atlas spine car that I have scrapped uh, so are the grab irons and I have grab irons on all of the ends including the little pieces there uh, so it's just going to be a matter now of duplicating the brake rigging for this one on this side making the air tank mounts and everything like that and then these are going to be slightly different these are more simplified these just have the airline running and then I think it switches sides over here somewhere so I'll just scratch that up uh, but we're making some good pretty good progress here uh, still looking into what I can possibly use for weights underneath this uh, I actually might use maybe some of those steel balls that you find commonly in like buckshot something like that maybe uh, if I could get like a, a container of those, I can just glue them all together and then seal them shut inside this beam. I think that would work pretty well. I know a lot of guys use those for uh, weights inside their models. So I might actually get a jar of those, like Walmart or something, and use those instead. Uh, whichever, but just a quick progress shot here. We'll continue on. The other thing, uh, I also added the little pads there as well. The only other thing pad that I actually got to add is the little mounting pads that will go here because there's obviously nothing that the container is going to sit on when it's just sitting on that deck, right? So what I actually got to do is make a little mounting section that will fit inside these corners of a container like this and sit flat like that. But uh, I'm going to wait to add those till later till I actually have containers and I can figure out the dimension I need and then I'll make the little pads and I'll mount them where I need to on this this and these end pieces of course for all four. Once I do that then it should be pretty simple so that's where I'm at. And continuing on we'll see what we get done next. Just want to show you guys this real quick um, I've pretty much got all the brake work done for each of these cars they all have the brake lines, a couple of lift bars are installed I've taken tape and I've masked over the couplers and these are ready to get uh, flat black paint so I'm going to paint these cars and get them prepped up. In the meantime, I'm going to start working on artwork because I got to get decals made for these. Uh, so by the time you see these cars next, they'll be actually be painted. Uh, but we've gotten a lot done in a short amount of time. These took about a week to build, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm definitely glad I'm not planning on building any more of these. It was a lot of work, but we got it done, and I now have two complete sets of cars uh, ready for paint. So by the next shot, these will be painted and they'll uh, pretty much be ready for final detailing, decaling, and then weathering. Well guys, here's what we're looking at now. Um, since that last clip, I got motivated and I learned that there was another version of these spine cars. I'm building um, the Johnstown version, this version that we've been working on. There's another version of these cars called the Berwick version, which has an, a really unique uh, layout and very unique uh, road specific details basically so I actually went ahead and scratch built another set of these cars so I now have three sets of cars and this one is another really unique version so this is the Berwick version these are the Johnstown America versions all steel uh, spine cars so so far so good I've uh, just started spraying the paint and I'm using my trusted testers black enamel this is a great flat black uh, it's a great substitute for what I used to be using um, but uh, the paint I was using was a Walmart brand black spray paint which was great because it came in a large can um, but they got rid of it and it was only like 79 cents so go figure anyways this is the substitute this works just as well uh, you can spray it on pretty thick it starts to look like it's gonna bubble up and you're gonna get orange peel uh, but this stuff always dries real flat it's almost like auto enamel uh, so it works really well for models like this the only downside is, is that it's very flat so to properly finish these cars off I'm gonna have to put a shit ton of gloss coat on them before I can put any decals on but that'll be the next step so I just got the final coat of uh, the black on and all the sides are painted 
especially with cars like this, you got to be very careful to try to hit as many angles as possible because uh, you might end up running into issues where you see some white shadowing from the underlying paint. I did not prime these. Generally with black painted cars, I will not prime them. If I'm painting them a lighter color, say a red, a yellow, a green, uh, maybe a blue or a purple, something like that, I would go ahead and prime them. But since these are just white cars off the big, uh, pretty much the rip, I just black coated them pretty much. So we now have painted models. We're going to let these dry overnight and tomorrow we're going to hit these up with a gloss coat and then we're going to start looking at what we're going to do for decaling for these models.